Gustave Roussy in Paris is one of the world's leading cancer centres, often treating rare or complex tumours, as well as trialling some of the latest diagnostics and therapies. Personalising a cancer plan can be a really tough challenge, especially when it comes to the balance between providing enough treatment to avoid recurrence and over-treating and the impact that that can have on a patient's health. And here, what's known as a non-interventional clinical trial is using artificial intelligence to assess the risk of recurrence. But because this is a study where long-term data is vital, the patients aren't told of the AI's findings to avoid the risk of life or death treatment decisions being based on them. French and US tech company Okin has partnered with the hospital to digitise over 1,500 tissue samples from women with breast cancer. This will provide some of the information needed to classify patients between having a high, intermediate or low risk of their disease returning within five years. We know that for this type of cancer, the prognosis is good, with more than 90% uh, of patients uh, be able to to get rid of the disease. In these patients, we want to avoid as much as possible an EV treatment that can be considered in itself and as a new disease. So that's why you want to identify the patients that are not likely to relapse. Okin aims to complement everyday clinical practice with its tool. It can already be used in European hospitals and the company's working on an updated version for those in the UK. What does an oncologist who's used to having difficult conversations with patients make of it, though? What we do now in terms of assessment of the risk is uh, to have the standard information, the standard clinical and histopathological information that are the tumour size, the lymph node involvement, the tumour grade, the tumour histology, the expression of the uh, estrogen. The AI is going to provide a, a more comprehensive analysis of all this data and it's going to complement this genomic test, this genomic analysis. Pathologists here aim to digitise and analyse another 400 slides over the next two years as part of the prospective validation stage of the relapse risk study. To look at the patient's breast cancer tissue, the pathologist places the sample onto a slide and then embeds it in paraffin wax. This helps both preserve it and keep it in place. Then instead of it being put under a microscope, it's taken from the lab to a digital scanner, where a very high resolution image of the cancerous cells is created. Digitising slides isn't a new concept, but running an AI model to determine the risk of cancer returning is. No one involved is suggesting that this will replace the importance of doctors, but the hope is that more detailed data and analysis could enhance their judgement calls. Here you have the breast uh, cancer that you can see. The, the thing that is white is fat tissue and the cancer it's all this stuff which is kind of purple. So I can see all these details on the slide and check that the quality is good. And once uh, I, I say okay the quality is good, I send it to a server where the AI is performed. And then after that uh, I, I received a report uh, performed by the AI. Uh, tell, telling me what is the uh, relapse risk associated to this slide. And after that, I can check uh, the, the report and also uh, see if for me uh, the relapse risk uh, is in accordance with what I saw on the microscope. By the nature of it, it needs to collect a lot of data and that means it's going to take a long time before it can actually be properly useful. I think that a follow-up of five years for the patients included in this trial could be informative enough to understand the performance of the AI. Within minutes of the slides being scanned, the AI will have made its assessment of the risk in this case, it's low, but when it's at a more moderate level, the dilemma really exists. Sometimes there is a grey zone and uh, some cases are borderline, mm. so maybe not completely good prognosis, maybe completely bad. 
And in this gray zone, we need other tools to decide uh, for the prognosis of the patient. And here we have the information that you receive after the AIs looked at the data. Exactly. So uh, here, for example, I, I can see that uh, the AI risk is low. It's a low risk uh, patient. Some cancer experts see real promise in AI tools like Okins, but there are still challenges. It's really exciting work and it's showing where the future lies for pathology. While it might not be absolutely there yet for clinical deployment, I think it's a really important first step and something that we should be encouraged by. The real benefit to patients of these is patient safety in the first instance to make sure that we don't miss cancers, that we can detect small areas of cancer that could otherwise be missed by pathologists. But I think we're, we're progressing along a journey and really without the digitization process, we won't be able to develop the, the rich algorithms that we need for patient benefit. And also it would be more challenging to deploy them into clinical practice. So whilst it could be years before these systems are rolled out across cancer care, trials like this one help create the setups and data sets that could eventually revolutionise the way we treat patients. <laughs>